From San Antonio, Texas, home of the Alamo, the Riverwalk, and the World Heritage San Antonio Missions, this is the Exit Planning Coach Podcast with John F. Dini. Designed to help advisors who work with business owners, John talks with top professionals in the exit planning field about best practices, marketing tips, and how to be more effective when working with owners. Now, here's John F. Dini. Hi, and welcome to today's edition of the Exit Planning Coach Podcast. I'm John F. Dini, the, your host, and today I'm talking with Dan Springer. Dan is the director of the wealth planning team at McLean Financial Group in Reno, Nevada. Great town. Been there many, many times. I've got good friends that just live a little bit south of there uh, in Douglas Valley. Um, Dan has an extensive background from, in the banking industry, and he fostered a lot of connections with local business and investment partners for there, from there. And he has now developed a customized proprietary approach to transition planning for business owners. Dan's also driven by a passion for creating positive change in his community, uh, inspired by his eldest daughter, Joy, who has severe autism. Dan founded Joyride, a nonprofit organization dedicated to providing recreational opportunities for children or individuals, really, some are adults, with autism and other disabilities. Uh, the recreational opportunities revolve around Dan's interest, which is outdoors as much as possible, mountain biking, kayaking, hiking, snowboarding, or skiing, and you live in the perfect area for it. Uh, so you can get to any Therapy. of that, and you can get to any of that all year round, which is one of the really cool things about, about, about Reno. Reno. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, welcome, Dan. Glad to have you on. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure, pleasure to be on. Um, and we get asked a lot from advisors on what we're doing. And I present at our broker dealer um, conferences. And so it's a pleasure to be here and maybe share some insight into uh, a program and how we work with business owners. Great. We appreciate it. Let's start out with how you got started. You're a banker. Everybody knows bankers well, you know, quit at three o'clock every day, charge 3% over prime and they're good, right? Yeah. So <laughs> went, into, went into banking with the old school idea that these are, are respected. Like you're right up there with, um, you know, the old school, with the doctors and the attorneys and uh, uh, didn't turn out to, to, to <laughs> really be that. Um, I felt like a used car salesman. <laughs> so uh, the, the bank I was with was, um, actually closed all their branches in Reno that year. And so I was laid off and then found found my a new calling um, doing uh, working with business owners on financial planning. So uh, and I n never looked back. I've been been doing that for 15 years now. Great. And, and what made you focus on business owners rather than just high net worth individuals in general? So our, at our firm, we've always had a a business owner focus. That's our niche. Um, and we, every, a lot of business owners we have now have been with us for 30 years or more. Um, mm -hmm. In the early days, we were helping them get their businesses going, uh, fine tune, working on it, how to focus on yourself and your personal planning as well as the business at the same time. And, you know, all these, all these, rules that we hear of, you know, we don't keep all your assets in the business. You should be paying yourself first, whatever that is, uh, coaching our clients along the way. So it's been a long time coming and geez, probably 10 years ago, it just naturally, these owners were getting older and some of them were wanting to move on and do something else. Some of them were getting ready to talk about what they're going to do when they're going to be done. And so it was nat a natural progression around 2015 for us to start talking more about that. We were always talking a little bit about that, but really didn't incorporate um, that into our program as much until recently. Um, really, it was COVID that really launched us into, um, well, geez, we have, we have to, the office is closed or we're working from home and we found EPI and exit map and um, just focusing more time on that lended to the creation of our master planning program 
uh, with that stronger emphasis on transition planning. So um, business owners is very, working with business owners is very natural to us um, and our experience has helped us be able to put this program together um, and know what business owners need to be focused on. Great. Um, so we have, um, in talking with our business owners, we know that most of them don't know the answers to these questions. So all the stats about how two, two out of 10 businesses act will actually successfully transition. 50% of owners maybe have focused on a financial plan. We, we've lived this for a long time. And um, seeing that and being SEPAs, um, it just really motivated us to make a change in our community and uh, improve those stats uh, in our own local businesses first. So yeah, we really you know, go into... Oh. I was going to say, you know how passionate we are. You've, you've seen the exit planning coach handbook and, you know, the numbers of the numbers of business owners who are unhappy a year later because it didn't come out or that they're not living the life they thought they would uh, is just atrocious for us as an industry. We're, we're constantly campaigning on that. Absolutely. Um, and the amount of, of business owners who I don't think we've met one yet. I haven't that had a contingency plan. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're talking about, oh, what, you know, oh, we, we, we did a valuation or, or something. And it's like, well, what if you're not around tomorrow? Um, who else knows what to do? Right. Um, so no contingency plans. Um, we, that's a big part of our early, early on in our process. Um, and essentially integrating the fundamentals that exit map brings to your program and EPI, um, all the essential components to doing yeah. a process the correct way. Um, Although we been driving us, I, I had I had one today, um, and it will not be traceable because we don't say when we recorded this, but it's, but uh, we got through we got through the exit map, we got through the personal visioning. And we got through the priorities needed to move forward and listed them all. And uh, I asked them to to select the priorities, what would come first, what was top of mind. And his answer was, oh, well, I can't do any of this. I'm too busy. I'm working 55 or 60 hours a week. And yeah, all those things would be nice, but I can't do them. So <laughs> still a challenge when you get that far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, you talk about, you know, what, what are the most impact, important factors uh, in a client or what do we need out of this relationship? Well, we need you to be able to focus on the business, not just in it. Right. Right. Is one of those. Yeah. Before we get to the plan, I do want to, I do want to see, I know you've offered to, to show us, your proprietary plan, I'd like it. But before that is a setup, describe your first meeting with a client, a prospect who just has been referred to you or answered some sure. marketing or something. How does that first meeting go? Our first meeting, which we call our FTA, or first-time appointment, um, involves an introduction to our firm. So we talk about who we are. Uh, we research the client beforehand, and we're, we talk about them. We know a few things through their website and through Google. Um, they're usually family businesses, small micro market, um, small businesses here in Reno. Uh, talk about um, our history um, and what we do and also our commitment to them. So the commitment to our community that I talked about and making a difference in these alarming statistics. Um, and then our mission. Our mission for business owners is to inform them support them and hopefully help them feel empowered to take control of their transition. So whether we're doing a conference or taking a client through our process, um, informed, supported, and empowered um, is our mission. And going into that first meeting, you know, we're not, I'm not going in there asking 
them for their business. It's telling them about us. Here's our mission. Here's why I'm here today. And hey, we'd like to talk to you some more if we think it's a good fit. That first time appointment is really a two way street. Mm -hmm. we're, we're looking at them, evaluating them. Um, if we think they'll be successful um, in a program or whether um, or, or not. So we're really, we will invite them for a second meeting uh, to come to our office and let's go through our program with you. They know in a nutshell what our program after that first time appointment consists of um, because we just highlight in probably five or 10 minutes what it is. And usually there's some interest and they have questions. And if there's some interest or a question after that first time appointment, uh, we are we usually 80% um, close rate on getting them to our office. And so Inter the goal of first time appointment is just getting them to our office. Yeah. Interesting, so, the first, so your first meeting is always at the client site? We usually go to them. Yeah, occasionally they will schedule and come by the office. Okay. But most of the time we go to them. Okay. And show me, you know, this is a good opportunity to show us the the plan as you would as you would illustrate it for an owner. Can you yeah. put that up for us? Great. So, so this is our master planning program. It's a program that that covers it's a multi year, but it's really within the first year that we um, focus because it's there's so much to focus on. But we position it as a, as a one-year program. Um, it's flexible. I'll talk about meeting the client where they're at. Um, but as an example, uh, months one through three focus on their personal financial plan uh, because we believe your personal planning should be driving your business decisions. And evaluating their team. Do you have a team around you that can handle everything? Who are you using? Do you need to replace any professionals um, or are your current professionals um, good and they like to work with other professionals? That's important. Mm -hmm. um, we found a lot of professionals who say they like to work with others, but really don't. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why that happens. But um, um, then we get around to designing their financial plan, uh, presenting their plan and what their gaps are. A month, then we move into contingency planning, which is month four, because all the planning in the world wouldn't be worth anything if we, if something happens tomorrow and we don't have a contingency plan in place. Sure. And, and like I said before, I haven't met an owner who had one. So we document that and we use Exit Maps uh, continuity instructions worksheet to get that started. Uh, business baseline continuity instructions um, to get that continuity plan started and usually we're developing a couple different scenarios. Um, from there, we're moving into financial and operational analysis. So we're really diving into the business a little bit. Um, using pro forma financials, we're developing those because I haven't met a business owner yet who actually had something like that, a planning tool that's usually in their heads. Um, and then we use management succession worksheet, owner centricity um, analysis um, to really focus in on how much time is being sent, spent by that business owner currently, um, who their key people are, do you have backups for these people, what if something happened to one of these people. Um, and before I must say at this point, before this even gets started, we're at that first time appointment, we're doing the assessment. So after that appointment, we're sending them an assessment to get started. And so when they do come to the office, that's when we go over that. Um, I forgot to mention that. Um, so now that we're almost six months in, now we're, we're what we call benchmarking your business. And so a lot of business owners we speak with don't, yeah, they know evaluation is important, but they just aren't really quick at writing the check for that. <laughs> and so there's lots of tools out there now, um, benchmarking tools. Uh, we use three or four different websites and databases to produce a benchmarked value for them. And usually we'll give them a range. Um, hey, based on these three databases 
and looking at your um, looking at your financial analysis and your pro forma, we think you're probably in this range of business value. And that's usually good enough to give us an indicator of how that compares to their gaps that we uh, discovered in month three. And so we're not immediately jumping into go get evaluation done mm -hmm. because I mean, there's multiple reasons for that and that they don't even know what type of transition at this point they're going to do. Right. So how, um, what kind of valuation do we need? Well, we don't know yet. Um, so that's six months in month seven really takes a step back from the process and focuses on health and retirement. We bring in a local health professional uh, to talk about stress and the impact on your life and the seven stressors that make up um, people's lives. And most people maybe think of stress. Oh, yeah, maybe they can maybe think of two things that cause stress. But if you're going to continue running your business, what impact is that going to have on your health, your family, your life? We look at that. That has actually become one of the one of the most favorite meetings out of the program because mm -hmm. owners say nobody's ever stepped back and talked to us about this before. Um, and it's only at this point where we enter, we bring in an outside strategic coach, a business coach. Um, I'm a financial planner. I'm not a strategic business coach. Yes, I know a lot. I, I know a little bit about everything, um, but I do have my specialty. And so we don't hesitate to bring in this. When we talk about building the team, we, we yes, we cover the bankers and the insurance people and the attorneys. And we bring in a strategic business coach to talk to them about what's your vision for the company? Where do you want to be in five years, three years? And it's really not until month eight and nine that we start figuring out what their vision is. Now that they know how much money they need, they know how how tight or how dis, um, disoriented their business is. Um, and that can help them say, well, geez, five months ago, I think my vision was this. But now that we've looked at all this stuff, I think this should be my my goal. Sure. Or my we vision. see that. We see that quite a bit. And so we're not changing it up. Um, we're, we think it flows very well with this in month nine, we're doing usually two workshops, two hour workshops to come up with the vision and the initial action items. And then we're launching into our first 90 day sprint in month 10, 11, and 12 with the objective of helping them be successful in that first sprint. Um, and usually they are and they're motivated, it creates momentum. And in year two, we continue, most of our clients continue to meet monthly. Um, some of them go quarterly because they just don't move as fast. Yes, we've got these action items, but it's gonna take them three or four months to get through a couple of them. And so, okay, let's move to a quarterly program. Um, this is a sample one year program that is working and we've been doing, this is our, we're in our fifth year now and wow, we great. have made very few changes to it and we um, leverage exit maps tools uh, to plug into this month one through three is our just basic financial planning process we've been doing for 30 years mm -hmm. so I mentioned in the beginning really going going through EPI and our relationship with exit map has helped us develop this program further into a full transition planning program well that's pretty great um let's take a break now gotta pay for the podcast a word from our sponsor which is us you know uh we look in the mirror for the sponsor um and we'll be back in we'll be back in 60 seconds and i want to talk to you about a couple other things that you brought up in showing us that system How would your practice survive if only 25% of your clients were happy with your work? How many referrals would you get? Would you advertise that success rate? Over the last decade, both the Exit Planning Institute and PwC have surveyed owners and found that 75% were profoundly unhappy a year after their exits. In 10 years, the exit planning industry has done little to fix this issue. Business owners need purpose, direction, and activity after exiting. Planning for that starts with your very first coaching conversation. We work with advisors who believe that clients should be happy after exiting. 
Exit Map is a structured discovery process that helps you have deeper conversations about client options, objectives, and life after the business. We help you launch better transitions. Take a test drive at ExitMap.com. Welcome back to the Exit Planning Coach Podcast. I'm here with Dan Springer, the Director of the Wealth Planning Team at McLean Financial Group in Reno, Nevada. And as you know, Dan, uh, through EPI and, and Exit Map and the whole industry recognizes the need of other professionals and other people you can reach out to for advice. So although we will have it uh, attached to the podcast when we put it out, can you tell people in case they're driving in the car listening to this how they would get a hold of you? Sure. You can Google us at McLean Financial Group. Um, or you can reach us at 775-329-3041. Great. Thank you. A um, couple, couple of questions from what you presented to us. Um, one is uh, you mentioned the two two-hour strategy workshops. Who's in that? In the strategy workshop, it's the quarterback, uh, the financial planner, and the strategic coach strategic business coach, value advisor, AKA, you know, lots of different names for okay. these, right? Um, we, I call them strategic coaches. So this is not employees. Nope. No, it is. It may get there. Uh, so a few times we have had owners and it's, we've determined it was appropriate when we do have these workshops. Hey, we, we think you should have your key people here. They agreed. And it turned into a, a big round table, full room. Mm -hmm. Um, three to seven people, which was great. Usually we'll know by the time we get to month eight, nine, whether we're recommending that they have their key people there or, you know, you're good just starting with just the owner. Okay. Okay. And you talk about the team, but you talk about team as an acronym. Uh, what does that stand for? <laughs> so uh, one of our, we month one, we talk about building the team, but it's, it's also an acronym. So, Teams, plural, uh, stands for transition planning, is just simply good business strategy. We say integrated with your personal financial goals and working on the now will produce better results later. So transition planning is T, E is execute. Execution is the number one single point of failure in most businesses, small or big. Measuring your results also goes into that. So executing, A is adopt, and that's adopting a process and involving your team. So following a process is a lot easier than, than not. Um, and it's easier to talk to a client to say, here is our process. A is, or M is for measure, because if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Mm -hmm. That's a quote, it's not ours. Um, <laughs> Measuring yeah, I, your think, I think I've heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> your, your personal life goals should be guiding your business decisions. Um, so measuring it and starting out assessing and measuring and, and it starts with, with exit maps assessment tool. Um, and S is for success. So improve your opportunity and your chances and likelihood for success by following these steps of adopting a process measuring, executing, and actually going through a transition planning structured exercise. Cool. Cool. That's excellent. Somebody's going to, somebody's going to swipe that. You can be sure of it. Um, you know, we're consultants. We're in that business. We take other people's I, stuff. You know, I am, I, I've always been one. I'm an open book. If I can help you in your practice, uh, give you something to take away. That's my objective. Um, yeah. So you, you know, shouldn't have to put it together yourself. It's the first no. thing advisors ask when you finish EPI or you finish some credentialing is how do I implement this? Well, I don't, I don't know. How do you want to implement it? You have to go to the drawing board and come up with a process and a structure. And if this can be used as a, as a base draft for, for another advisor to develop their own business and help business owners, that would be fantastic. Right. And you know, you know, the rule in consulting, you you give attribution the first three times you use it. After that, it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
we, you know, one of our, one of our questions that we like to ask, because it's so important when you talk about people starting out and people saying, how do I get rolling on this is the point of conversion. You know, do, do you have a, do you have a, a place, a technique in your process where a, a prospect becomes a client or, or a prospect is a, you can identify that they're now willing to be a client. I think it's very important to um, meet the client where they're at. When Whether you're in a first time appointment as we call it or an initial talk with someone, finding out what's on their minds, letting them talk, um, not talking too much. And we call this determining that, that prospect's unique call to action. What is it gonna take for them to start working with you on something? Maybe they need a referral. You know, um, something, work with them on something. They don't have to sign up for a program right away. It's, hey, here's, I've been in the business a long time. I know, we know a lot of people in the community. We have lists of um, partnerships and referrals we can provide. You listen to what's important for them, meet them where they're at and help them. Give them some a tidbit of information, or referral that helps them. Um, and then they are open to what else you may be able to help them with. So that individual call to action, um, meeting them where they're at and being flexible around that, we think is um, one of the keys to converting right. a prospect to a client. Right. I have, I'll, I'll throw another piece of advice in that I will attribute to Jim Moore, who's an attorney uh, that uses Exit Map. And Jim says, he asks his client, how do you process information? Do you prefer to read things? Do you prefer to watch things? Or do you prefer to listen to things? And then he mm -hmm. supplies them with follow-up information in the format they said they like it. Sure. Absolutely. Good idea. That's important. Yeah. With, so to converting someone to a client, it's, it's that, meeting them where they're at, um, being flexible. And um, we found that Focusing on that contingency planning first uh, can go a long way. Yes. They may yeah. be thinking about, yeah, okay, I could do a program. You know, here I'm, I'm really, you know, their mind's in their business. Mm -hmm. So what happens if you didn't show up tomorrow? Or what happens if something's to your key person? They don't know. So um, I would say one of the first go-tos is let's work on a contingency plan. So that would be number two. Yeah. Great. Um, you mentioned referrals. You mentioned having a group of people and, and clients and other professionals. Do you cultivate referrals? Do you reach out to your referral sources? If so, how? So we have a pretty strong connection with CPAs um, in our industry, but we really get referrals from our existing clients. Mm -hmm. So we do. we're always talking about other businesses, we do events where existing clients can bring um, other people to them. We're doing, in two weeks, we're doing the Reno Rodeo, um, three days, box seats, and existing clients are invited and prospects are invited. And it's, most of it comes from our existing clients, and then we pay for calling service. So we use two calling services that call, I think it's a 100 mile radius, um, on the subjects of retirement plans and business succession planning. So the calling service tries to reach the owner. Um, you know, have you been in, have you, is this an interest for you? Is it something you've thought about? Um, a lot of them say, well, yeah. And they say, well, we're going to connect you with a local expert. Um, how about they stop in and see you next week? Uh, that's how we get a lot of our referrals. Mm -hmm. Usually, there's two a month at least, um, and and we all you only pay for it if you're uh, if it's a qualified lead for one if you do the appointment and and it's just not something that you can help them with you don't have to pay for that um, but if it's somebody you think was a good meeting and it's it's your ideal client um, that's the those are the ones that you pay for so well, two calling services um, and then our own networking. Excellent. Excellent. Well, 
you've already you've already rendered a, a lot of helpful advice to people that are starting out in the industry. I mean, the, the team's acronym, uh, the approach, the client call to action, uh, mm -hmm. the appointment setting. Um, what's the one thing we always finish with advisors on the podcast asking with all the new people that are coming in and certainly you participate in EPI, you know how many people are put every month that are going for their certification to get involved in this industry. What do you think is the most important thing for a brand new advisor to do uh, to start his exit planning practice? We believe the future of advice is going to be a single point. So that quarterback and to be a quarterback, you need to build strategic partnerships. So building, building that the team that you would use to help a client is imperative. So you can, you can lean on these people. If you haven't been in the business very long or you're not really comfortable in front of a business owner, but you want to become more comfortable, have meetings with these people, bring them in. You don't need to be the expert. The client doesn't expect you to be the expert in everything. But if you can bring people into your meeting and they don't have to go find people, that's the type of advisor and advice we think the future is going to be and people will pay for that. Mm. So being that, being that quarterback, um, uh, having those partnerships, leaning on others and following a process. Great advice, great advice. And we hear so many people, you know, we talk to tons of advisors uh, every week. And so often we hear like, well, I'm afraid they're going to ask me about X and I don't know yeah. about X, you know? Yep. Uh, so that's, that's terrific advice. Get, get somebody else in the room with you. And be, being open about it, like tell them I'm not the expert in everything, but I have experts at my right. disposal. Right? right. Well, I really appreciate it. It has been a blast. Uh, spending time together today. I got to know you a little bit better. I mean, you've been an Exit Map subscriber for a long time, and thank you very much. And uh, hopefully, we can get you back, and and we're going to be doing some topic based stuff in the future, and and have you sit in and uh, and render render your wisdom again. Thank you very much, John. I appreciate okay. it. I look forward to that. Thanks a lot, Dan.